glad to have you here with Michigan's retirement coach, certified financial planner, Mike Douglas. You can start the conversation about your retirement plan by visiting us at michigansretirementcoach.com. Don't forget to click on the links you've got posted in the show notes if that's more convenient, as well as subscribing to our YouTube channel. I said it just for you. YouTube I don't know why. I, I can't I see it, it any other way. I love it. YouTube channel. Just search Michigan's Retirement Coach on YouTube to find us that way as well. Meantime. Subscribe, like, comment, be part of the community, be part of the conversations. Give them all the, give them all the motivation. That's right. Let's Mike Douglas is double fisting today. Fully caffeinated. He's got coffee in one drink and an energy, coffee in one hand and energy drink in another. We're ready I don't know rock. if I should be excited or if I should be scared. But we just, just have your phone ready, just in case. Well, I, <laughs> in case you need to call an ambulance. Yeah, just in case. <laughs> and heart attack. <laughs> full calf. We're full calf today. Fully caffeinated. Uh, thinking about the money that we spend on frivolous items. <laughs> <laughs> like energy drinks. And I'm, I'm fully guilty of it. I yeah. have a Starbucks addition, addiction, and I am not ashamed to admit it. I don't we need to hear. at some point, not today. Starbucks is going through a whole like business revolution with the new CEO. They are? It is not the podcast today to talk about it. Okay. But we should do it. I've been okay. researching like there's a case study going on with them right now huh. because they are plummeting in sales. Yeah. And uh there's a little bit expensive. of like cannibalization of online ordering versus in store ordering. It's interesting. Not today. Interesting. Okay. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk maybe about we'll do it. a podcast about it in the future. Okay. But yeah, there's an interesting case study going on with Starbucks right now because they are hemorrhaging money, and they hired a whole new CEO to try and turn the whole thing around. The guy who turned Chipotle around is now their CEO. I did hear that. I do yeah. know that they had been in trouble, and I did hear that the guy who turned Chipotle around is turning, is if, trying to turn. If, if you around. love the fact that they have tons of weird, crazy drinks, uh, you better buckle up because they're about to yeah. tighten that menu up. All those, all those pink drinks are about to go the way of the dinosaur. Let's they're go back to the, what the coffee up shop. Well, fortunately for me, I'm a latte drinker, so. Uh, I, sh- I should be in a, in a safe lane as far as preserving my my drinks. It's a great but way to I kick d- off a podcast about savings. I do, I do, and um, my my one of my boss, my boss's boss, boss gave me a whole lot of coffee. I had a coffee cup in my hand. He gave me a whole lot of money. Shame. So I've been trying to do better. He did. He really, he hit me hard. He came at me and he was just like, "Do you know that if you invested that eight dollars a day, blah blah blah?" So I I have my my machine at I home and I'm trying in my joy. In my comfort, which is a Quit trying to rob coffee. my joy, Stephen. That's right. Uh, I'm trying to caffeinate and do. Hey, Stephen, I'm trying to caffeinate and do a better job for you so you can make more money. Trying to bring that podcast energy fully caffeinated. Um, there is a balance to be said for what we spend our money on, though, because, listen, you work very hard to earn your paycheck. You should be able to have happiness. Mm-hmm. But for a lot of folks trying to find that balance, figuring out income that's that's what you got to do. You've got to find that balance. This study by Smart Asset did an analysis around the entire country of a family of four, thinking about your average family, two adults, two kids. What do you need to live comfortably across the United States? Of course, there was a wide variance from a low of $178,000 a year in Mississippi to $301,000 in Massachusetts. But I think that that's fascinating right there. The lowest in Mississippi is still $178,000 of income is what a family of four now needs in, in this day and age to live, not even like top end life, just to live comfortably. Yeah. That is just a big number, I think. Yeah, it seems high, um, especially when you watch shows like Hometown, which is uh, on HGTV. That, yep, in about Mississippi. people in Mississippi. Yeah. And we always joke, we're like, man, we're okay in Michigan, but we would be rich in Mississippi. Are we? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, some of the houses they buy are, you know, $200,000. And I'm like, man, that would be a $500,000 house here. Yeah, yeah. So I also, and we've talked about this before, I have four kids. And so <laughs> everything in life, whether it's, a meal planning order kit, or it's studies done about how much money you need, it's always around a family of four. Mm-hmm. Give me this study around a family of six and watch that number spike up. Right. When all Especially three boys are got, eating adult sized meals. You've got three preteen and teenage boys. Of, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of mouths to feed. There's more than six mouths to feed in your family of mm-hmm. six. Um, what they also did in this study is the researchers used 
the 50, 30, 20 budget in their calculations. So that's 50% of your income goes to necessities, 30% for discretionary spending, and 20% to savings. Mm -hmm. So thinking about the work that you do, focusing on those who are getting close to or in retirement, perhaps, and again, in today's day and age, they may still be having to factor in more than just the two people, more than just that initial married couple. There are a lot of kids that are now still living with parents, a lot of uh, millennials and still at home, some people with grandkids now in the house. Some basement dwellers. We got some basement dwellers. dwellers. Thinking about how we need to create our income strategies and streams for retirement. Yeah. Does this 50, 30, 20 model still apply? So anytime you get a ratioed recommendation, all right, let's yeah. start with that term, right? Okay. Whether someone says you need a 60, 40 portfolio or a 50, 30, 20 budget or whatever it is, right? Whenever you get a ratioed thing, it's a great starting point for planning. It's okay. not the destination. It's the starting point. Okay. Got now, it. depending on this sliding scale is going to determine where you are in life, right? One thing I really like is that 50% of your money should cover the, like the keeping the lights the on, bills, keeping your life going. Yeah. Don't let them take your car, right? Yeah. Like if you can keep your life necessities at 50% of your income, that's a beautiful starting place. It's the hardest okay. thing for most people, especially right now with inflation hitting families yeah. so hard with cost of living going up in so many different places. Here's the good news. If you have a mortgage, that's not subject to inflation, right? That's the good news about it. If you have a fixed rate mortgage, it's not subject to inflation. So that stayed the same. Car pricing, as long as once you buy your car, you're fixed. But if you have to go buy a new car, man, cars are getting expensive. Mm -hmm. So certain things stay fixed while other things, man, they inflate way more. And we can see gas on a given week up or down by 20, 30 cents a gallon. We can see groceries just continuing to climb. And we just spent a lot of time talking, Heather, um, you know, off podcast, but about, you know, when you're trying to eat well. And you're trying to put mm. good ingredients into your body and into your family. It's How just getting expensive so expensive to so do it. So expensive, yeah. But yet it's such an important thing because you can, yeah. there's a great quote about health is that you can pay for it now with good food or later with medical costs. But, mm-hmm. um, but so it's all these challenges that face people. And so it's hard to keep it at 50%. But if you can, you do that. And then okay. 30% goes towards discretionary spending. That's pretty, especially as your kids grow. It's a bigger issue, right? Like mm-hmm. when you're like right now, we've got basketball shoes and basketball registration. Last night I was at a ballet, pra- a ballet. I was going to say, isn't your daughter in two different tap. dances? Yeah. Ballet and tap. Now they're back to back and she's got a wonderful teacher in studio, but it doesn't make it cheaper. Nope. Um, and so all these things continue. And then it's like we pay. Th- so we just got out of football season, which had cleats, gloves, mouth guards, helmets, all these different things. Then we immediately go into basketball, which has all these things. Uh, and then Christmas is next, basically next month. Mm-hmm. Um, and so as we're looking at that, that turns around quickly. And then we have our spring vacation and all these things. Mm-hmm. And so that has to fit inside of 30% of your income, allowing 20% to go to savings. Now, that's a great model. If you can accomplish that as a younger family, that's incredible. Most can't. We didn't for a long time. We survived until we could do better than surviving. And then we started to thrive and then just work our way up to the next levels. Yeah. But when you're, when we were a young family, no, man, it was, yeah. it was scrapping. When we Tough. first started our company, we were scrapping. Um, and you have to do what you have to do for a while. And then as you get better and better and better, your income goes up. You try to keep, you try to make sure your income and expenses don't walk hand in hand. Mm-hmm. That if your income goes up, maybe your expenses go up and then income and then expenses. That's how you right. get the good ratios. Okay. Um, but then as we're getting close to retirement, right? That's the young family model. And if you're close to retirement, you've lived through all those things. You've seen them happen. Mm-hmm. But as you get close towards retirement, you have to be able to do a good analysis of where we sit because certain numbers don't mean what they used to mean. Um, you know, uh, I remember as a young kid thinking, holy cow, $500,000 is a, a ton of money or a million dollars is a lot of money. Yeah, it, it if, is. If you retire at 60, a million dollars uh, is it's a number. It's a great job. You did incredible work getting there, but getting it to stretch over your life is a little more challenging because we don't die at 70 or 72. A lot of people are living to 90, 93, right. 95. That's right. And if you live longer, it doesn't mean that you did any worse of a job saving. It means you did an incredible job to get to a million dollars. However, the million has to stretch over 30 to 35 years versus 10 to 15. Yes. I mean, which is and, what generations and past had to plan for. Yeah, if you were if you retired in the 50s with a million dollars, 
you were rich set because yes. you were going to die in your seventies. And so it's a, you could really, when you're stretching a million dollars over 10 years, it pays pretty well. Um, but now that you have to stretch it over 30 to 35 years yep. with cost of living going up so much, it doesn't spend as far. And so there's just a different model. Um, you know, I had some clients who they did what all of us do while their kids were in the house at pretty much every dollar they went, they're trying to pay off debt trying to keep themselves above water, mm -hmm. uh, trying to pay for the kids, you know, whether it's horse back riding or braces. I mean, that's another golly. Uh, I should have invested into our orthodontist office. <laughs> I, if they're selling stock, I should have bought some. I got three yeah. kids in braces right now oh, and man. probably a fourth um, yeah. coming down the road. So all these things just keep eating away at our money. And so they did whatever all of us do is they paid it down. They tried to survive and then they got to 50 and their kids were coming off payroll. The kids were out of the house. They were no longer doing that. And now they had to pivot towards themselves. Now, yeah. again, they did the best of the information they could. If we had been working with them back in their 30s, well, then we probably could have helped them do some strategies. But here they are at 50, and they have to start really being intentional. Mm -hmm. So they didn't go 50, 30, 20. They went to like a 50, 50 or a 40, 60 model, mm -hmm. which was 40% was their discretionary and their uh, necessities and 60% went to savings. Yeah. And they work like dogs, uh, yeah. not like work, work, but like saved and budgeted Saving, and yeah. lived within their system. She created a beautiful system and uh, uh, with all these different, you know, monies flowing to here to here. Yeah. Yeah. And, but from age 50 to age 65, they saved away $1.3 million. Wow. Which was insane. That's insane. And so, and that's not, I mean, that was more than just their 401k. Like they had to put money into regular savings and into investments, non-qualified. They did a lot of work and they got to 1.3 million. It was incredible. Yeah. And then they retire and we're sitting with them talking through it. And it's how do we make sure that all of this intentional, crazy hard work for the last 15 years right. isn't screwed up by a market correction, isn't screwed up by um, taxes, isn't screwed up by our estate plan being wrong. And so that's what it means to go through and build something. You can shift those as time goes on. 50, 30, 20 is a great place. And any young family that can live on 50, 30, 20, it's incredible. But a lot of people see the savings number have to bump up for those past those last couple of years. That's why the IRS even gives you extra savings provisions starting at age 50. They allow more money to go into your 401k or into your IRAs because they know at this point we're in the home stretch. We're rounding the corner and we got to get this thing done. And so also, allow you again, to do more. the kids are likely out of the house. You, you had the opportunity personally yeah. to be able to do it. It's time to invest your money in yourself, yeah. right? And to set yeah. yourself up. So if you're in that home stretch or you're in retirement and you see that, man, we had to shift a lot more towards that, that's okay. That's a good thing. It's time to mm -hmm. really work hard at it. Um, and there are options. But again, even when I sat down with them, they'd done such a good job. But as we sat down to build a plan for them, they were so uncertain. They're so afraid because when you live in catch up mode that long, yeah, right. You feel like you're always chasing and I'm, I yeah. know I should have been here, but now I'm here. That mentality sets in for sure. Oh yeah. And they, you become a, a, like a, like a hoarder, like a survivor, mm -hmm. like they're just trying mm -hmm. to make it. And then we sit down and map out, what do you want life to look like? Yep. How much do you want an income? Yep. Well, how much do you want to travel? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do with your money? And as we went through and mapped out really starting with their dreams first, it's like, you know, goals, dreams, plans. We take that and then start putting numbers to them. Mm -hmm. And then we said, how much do you get in social security? We figured that number out. When should they take it? When should they not? As we went through and mapped it all out, we then said, all right, based on three different levels of inflation, low, medium, high, based on three different levels of rates of return, low, medium, high, we ran all these scenarios and said, you know what, over the next 30 years, 35 years, getting you to all the, all the way to age 100, which he mm -hmm. said, I'm not living to 100. I said, well, it's our job to make <laughs> sure the money know. lasts that long. Yeah. Um, you're going to be okay. You get to accomplish all the dreams, goals, and plans. It's going to take some consistent planning mm -hmm. and staying within certain realms, but they had worked so hard. And we said, you've made it. You've arrived. You're no yeah. longer scrounging and surviving. Now it's time to start living. And just to watch them have this, this peace of mind, this, this yeah. comfort, this, this lack of stress. Yeah. And over the course of about a meeting or two, we literally watched them like their, their countenance changed where they were like excited. And we started saying, I need you to start planning out next year's vacation. What do you mean? No I, said, I said, I need you to start thinking about it yeah. and come back with how much it's going to cost you. And we'll work the numbers to make sure it works out. And it just took them from 
a frantic mode and a scared mode to a joy mode into a thought process of, all right, we made it. Now we can start doing things. It doesn't mean you start getting reckless. We right. then created a budget for them inside of retirement, Got but it, it meant that they could start just checking things off the bucket list. Yeah. That's a successful, good retirement plan. That's what it means to build out a plan that is comfortable, that it's current, and it explores all the ways to maximize your retirement savings, your life savings that you've put together. Yeah. It's a strategy that makes sense. It's a comprehensive plan. It, it looks at your in, in your income, how you get paid, your investments. Are they good? Are they bad? Are they um, are they just whatever? Your risk, your taxes over the next 25, 30 years, and your estate plan. Even if you say, well, I don't really care about the estate plan so much. Yeah, but it's better that it goes to your kids than the government. So let's build an estate plan. So a life plan that maps all these things out and puts them all together on basically a couple of sheets of paper so we can see everything's accounted for. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. That's why we build these strategies. If you want someone to build a strategy like that for you, a comprehensive life plan that gives you everything that you need to make good decisions, arms you with information and gives you more confidence and more peace of mind. Um, on our website, michigansretirementcoach.com, as soon as you go there, michigansretirementcoach.com, there's a button that says, start your retirement roadmap today. Mm -hmm. We map out from where you are today, where you want to go the rest of your life and how to make sure you get there the right way. Avoiding the penalties, avoiding the, the, the construction zones on your roadmap, avoiding the mm -hmm. things that would derail you and just mm -hmm. making sure you live the life you've always dreamt of. That's the goal. michigansretirementcoach.com. Click on the start your retirement roadmap today and uh, we'll have that conversation. Let's get to work. Figuring out figuring out hopefully the budget that you don't have to live by in your retirement years, but the income streams that you can spend. And if there is a budget necessary, figure uh, hopefully more freedom in that in that budget life. But uh, just all in all, hoping that you will have an enjoyable retirement for all the years of work that you put into it. You deserve it. Again, the website, michigansretirementcoach.com. We also have links posted in the show notes. So you can just click there. Find us anytime, michigansretirementcoach.com.